Yo, what's poppin' guys? It's your boy Crooks the Great, back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 4 video, and today we're gonna be using Rafael Dos Anjos in the Walter Weight division. Now, I wanted to make this video because he had a very dominant performance against Moicano last weekend at UFC 272, so I figured, you know what? It's about that time he get himself another video. So here we're gonna be taking on Leon Edwards, and we're starting off, we're immediately chopping at that leg. Uh, I know Prioxis is known for using RDA, so I'm going to try to use him in a similar way. We're going to be trying to chop out those legs. Hit him with a nicely timed straight. Catch him in that slip. So far, so good. We kind of have the timing, but I see him launching off a leg attack as well. Uh, Leon Edwards, after his buff that he got, I believe, what, four or five seasons ago, uh, has really become the meta fighter in welterweight. Um, he has good switch stance. He he has really really good body health really gra good grappling has good cardio It's just well-rounded pretty much everywhere. You see a lot of people uh, Use him unless unless you're somebody who really doesn't like to fight in uh, in our camp fight in Southpaw But a lot of people even then tend to use him because he, he does have a really good switch stance. So We're trying to take our time here we're Trying to chop out those legs, but we need to be aware of RDA's leg health as well He does not have a good switch stance so we're going to need to start trying to check some of these kicks as well as close the distance. We can't play the distance game with RDA against Leon Edwards because Leon Edwards reach and his, his his kick reach is really ridiculous as well. So here we're trying to stay in the pocket. He whiffs on that kick. We barely missed on the overhand, but that's letting him know, you know what? If you throw him at an improper range, we're going to make you pay. There we slipped that uppercut that was coming out. Double jab to close the distance. Try to hit him to the body, then back, go back up to the head. Good knee right there as he moved off laterally. Very, very clean stuff so far. He's landing some very, very good and heavy shots as well. There's another nicely timed leg kick right there by him. Trying to launch off a combination as we threw a leg kick of our own. Chops the leg again. Now I'm noticing a pattern. Um, he's starting off closing the distance with the leg kicks, then trying to combo off of it, like right there. I was able to check that leg kick, so... He's not really throwing combinations with end, with uh, leg kicks at the end. So that's something that I did pick up on. So we're going to start trying to check these kicks. Like right there, we checked it again. And if we check enough of them, RDA, it, we're going to be able to get a leg health event. And it's going to really swing the tide in our favor. Hit him with a good body kick. Good jab straight to the body by him. Catch him with a nicely timed straight. Miss on the jab lead hook though. But we're starting to close the distance just a little bit better. Starting to get a good read and a good feel for what he's doing. Catch him right there with a nice two-piece. He misses on the straight head kick. Spacing it out, trying to bait one of those leg kicks out. But we did hit him with a jab, even though we did eat some leg health damage right there. Now he's blocking low because he doesn't want us to chop at his legs. So we add a jab in front of the leg kick. Does what we need it to do. Catch him with a good two-piece, mixing up the timing. Catch him with another three-piece. Try to catch him with a front kick. Nice leg kick right there by him ends the round. Now you see towards the towards the latter half of that round, we started to get a good feel and a good read on what he was doing. So now in the second round, we're going to try to make those adjustments. We're going to try to block those leg kicks, try to stay in the pocket a little more than we were in the first round and potentially be able to get this, get this guy out of here. So we're launching off the three punch combinations. Now, if you guys are going to use RDA, uh, I would highly recommend you guys learning how to throw good uh, combinations that end with leg kicks. Uh, just because he does have very, very good leg kicks as we get a leg health event right there. If you're not using leg kicks with RDA, you're really, really taking a really big element of his game out. So there we get a good rock on a three-piece right there. And it's going to set up your strikes with your hands as well. So we did get a rock right there. So now we're, we're smelling blood. I'm trying to close the distance, but he's doing a good job of moving laterally. I'm trying to time out the straight. Good leg kick right there by him. Go down to the body, then back up to the head. Hurt him, then go down to the body three times more. But Leon Edwards, I believe, has a 95 or 94 body health. So we're not going to... It's not going to be too easy to get body rocks off on him. Right there, we pull counter the uppercut. Hurt him. Drop him. Now we're going for the finish, but he's doing a good job of moving away. Throws a nicely timed knee. Catch him with a head kick. Drop him right there. Have him up against the fence. Now we're in a ground and pound scenario here. Raining down some heavy ground and pound strikes with RDA, but he's able to survive, man. 
tries to hit the get up and he's successful in doing so but we do have him up against the cage and we are in southpaw so we immediately go to the pressure catch him right there with a nice jab lead hook feigning to the body catch him with another two piece hurt him in another ground and pound scenario right here and we're trying to learn from what we did last time we're and we're not able to get the finish even with almost 75% of our stamina left. He blocked the get up right there, but we blocked the get up on his end. So now we're going to be able to posture up and mount, raining down heavy ground and pound strikes. We're only able to get one in effectively just because of how well this guy is moving his head and blocking. And I noticed that he's kind of using that broken guard uh, in top mount, which is going to allow him to be able to hit the get up like right there. But his head health, I know, is in all sorts of trouble. So it's not going to take too much more damage to Leon as we hit him with a nicely timed straight right there. Drop him. Going to be able, maybe, to get the finish right there. Very, very close stuff. Even then, he was still blocking well. But the damage was just too much. We were able to get that nice ground and pound finish there with RDA for the first win of the video. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the second fight that we do have for you guys here on the video. Now, here we are, guys. We are going up against Nick Diaz and a Division 9 guy. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Crooks, this is the Division 9 guy. This is the Division 9 guy. Now, you guys got to keep in mind that a lot of these higher rate guys, man, they're at lower divisions right now because it's a new season. So this guy could be very dangerous. I've never, I, I've only fought him twice before, so I'm not too familiar with him. And he's using Nick Diaz, who has very, very good boxing, and that jab straight does massive damage, even though he's only a three star, three and a half star. So you see him trying to close the distance with that jab, but he's launching off jab hooks as well, anticipating that we're gonna slip. So we just need to be careful on the timing of the slips, like right there. He hit us with a nicely timed jab hook because he thought we were gonna move to the outside. So we duck underneath. That still avoids that straight, but you're more likely to get caught ducking down than you are uh, with a straight than you are, obviously, with a hook. So here we're trying to keep it close. We're trying not to fight at that rhythm. You see how he's, he's launching one, two. He steps back. Then he starts again in with a jab straight, trying to close that distance. And then when he feels like we're going to slip, he's going to switch up to that jab hook. So we just need to be careful of that. And we can't go tit for tat with, uh, with Nick Diaz because RDA only has an 89 punch power. So we need to figure out some way to avoid and stop this pressure. This is something that if you guys are using Nick Diaz, if you guys are going to use a three and a half star Nick Diaz in welterweight, you need to be okay with doing his pressuring with that jab straight that he has. So he's jabbing into that block, trying to go with the hook, hook, hook combination. We crack him with a nice three piece. Hit him with another two-piece. Drop him right there with a nice jab hook. Hitting him to the body. Then go back up to the head right there with a nicely timed uppercut. Nicely timed slip straight. Catching him with a nice three-piece. But we get rocked with one lead hook from Nick Diaz. We're in trouble. We're trying to fight back just to keep the pressure off. This guy's still throwing out a lot of jab straights. Now, I know I get a lot of questions from people about... Um, how do, you, how do you counter somebody that just likes to fight like this guy is fighting? The jab straight, jab hook, jab straight, jab hook. You just need to slip that jab. You need to slip that jab and force them to throw jab hooks. And then you could potentially get a, a nice little pull counter. So that's something that we're shooting for right here. Hits us with that nice push animation. There we slip the jab. Catch him with a nice three-piece combination that ended in a head kick. We're going for the ground and pound finish right here. But he's, shall he's shelling up right there. Doesn't move his head at all. Now, we just need to be aware of a submission, but we give up the Kimura right there. Now, we're just going to stay patient, try to move, because Nick Diaz does have good uh, he does have good submissions because he is a BJJ black belt in real life, and he has submitted a lot of people. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Nick Diaz, you need to go and watch Nick Diaz fights. They're probably the most entertaining fights in the UFC ever, just in my opinion. But specifically the Takanori Gomi fight, where he hit uh, Takanori Gomi with the... With the uh, with the go-go plata. So we're back to our feet. Hit him with a nice slip straight right there. Knock him down with the lead hook. Now we're going in for the finish. Might be able to get it done. And we are able to get the ground and pound finish off of that nice slip straight that we were able to land. And that's how you want to counter the jab straight spammers. But very, very good win for us here in the second fight. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the third and last fight that we do have for you guys here on the video. 
Now here we are guys, we are going up against the champ, the Nigerian Nightmare, Kamaru Usman in the welterweight division. And we're taking on a level 99 now. The level 99, he's at the last prestige you could be at, which is which is the third prestige, level 99. You can't get any higher. So this guy has played the game quite a bit. So we just need to be careful. And this matchup can be kind of tricky because Kamaru does have the power advantage and the grappling advantage. So we really don't have a statistical advantage. And he hits me with a nice takedown right there. So it's really just going to come down to skill and how we decide to play it. So we get him the full guard. This is where we want to do our work. RDA does have good jujitsu. So we're not too worried about him being in our full guard as we hit the half guard sweep right there. Now we're on top. We block that transition off right there. Punching him, got full, almost damn near full GA. We post, we get in the top mount, but he does a good job of regaining the half guard. We posture up. He's moving a lot, which lets me know next time I posture up, I can go for side control. I just got to wait a second. He tries to go for sprawl, but we block that. Punch in to get that GA up, go for side control. We're able to do so effectively right there. And he's punching to the body, hits that up transition. Now we're going to go up. And we waited a second. We are able to get that undeniable side control transition. And then we get him straight in the crucifix, which is a really, really bad spot. But he's able to get out of it effectively right there. Throwing some elbows. Good punch flick right there by him. Gets him out of there. So now we're on. We're in sprawl here. We're going to try to take backside. And we do so effectively right there. We don't want him to get up. So we block that. We block that get up right there. We do take the back. Now let's see what he does here. Smart stuff. Decides to roll to that top mount. We posture up, raining down some good ground and pound strikes right here. I see that he's trying to post up the hooks and not really moving his head too much, so we're going to throw a lot more straight strikes. He goes for the transition, able to regain half guard right there. And then we do, unfortunately, give up full guard, but we do have the stamina advantage, so we're able to get half guard back right there with a nice posture up. Now we're just looking for control, but I do go for the arm triangle here just to see how, how good his, uh, his submission defense is. And it's looking all right. It's not looking too bad. Either that or my, my sub offense is trash. You guys have heard me say that a lot. It's something that I really do need to work on. We posture up again. We throw a straight strike, but he did move his head that time instead of just blocking. So he does get up effectively. Throwing off combinations. We crack him with a good jab hook as he's going for a knee right there. We knocked him out of that knee animation twice, which lets me know if he does get close to us. He is not... Not going to uh, fight us fair. He's going to try to go with those knees and elbows. There's another one. Crack him with a good lead hook. There's a nicely timed combination right there by him. Starting to press the pace. We need to keep it inside the pocket. He shoots for another takedown, but we're hip to that one to deny it. Let him go. Catches us with a nicely timed head kick right there as we were leaning, trying to catch the slip straight. So now this round, he really just stole this round from us just with that rock. And there's another knee and there's the elbow. There's the double elbow. Try to crack him with a leg kick as he backed up. But it didn't work out too well. Nice jab hook, lead uppercut by him. And I see that he's moving off. And that's the end of the first round. Now, I learned a lot just from that first round. Like literally learned pretty much all I needed to know from that first round. He took me down. I, I felt how easy it was to just hit that half guard transition. So I'm not really worried about him doing too much damage on the ground. Or trying to control me with Kamaru. Uh, he throws that jab, that jab rear hook lead uppercut combination. So that's maybe one that we can pull counter or slip off as well. And then when we get close, I'm just anticipating him already to start spamming the knees and elbows like he was kind of towards the end of that round there. So picked up a, a, a lot of little information, a lot of information in that first round that could really prove to be very, very handy here in the second round. So we're pressing the pace, cracking with a good four punch. But like I said, RDA only has 89 power. So it's going to take a lot more than that to get Kamaru to get hurt. There's that There's that combination. We're able to pull counter it into the uppercut. That information I was telling you guys paid off right there. That's why we were able to get that rock and drop. Now he's going with the uppercut. We're trying to put the, put the pressure on him. He's still going with that head kick. Catch him right there in that knee animation. There's another one. Into the elbow. There's the double elbows. Cheeky motherfucker. This dude is just... People tend to turn into spammers, so we rock him right there for our trouble. Drop him. Now, hopefully, he decides to go away from those those knees and elbows, man. 
But I see him trying to sway off as well. So I, I just need to be careful not to get hit with like a slip hook. As we heard him right there, crack him with a good lead uppercut straight. And we're going to be able to get the dub with RDA off of that knee. That knee, we caught him with the straight lead hook and then finished it off with the lead uppercut straight. Dropped him. Got the dub. Nothing better than beating the knee and elbow spammer. Nothing better. Nothing better. But that's the last fight that I do have for you guys on the video. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. We do post UFC 4 content on this channel down near daily as well as stream it. But until the next video, guys, thank you guys for stopping by, and I will see you guys in the next one.